Have you ever been scrolling through YouTube and you're just kind of looking for some good content to watch and you land on a thumbnail and you think, yeah, maybe, and you turn on that video and you start to vibe with that person and that content creator. So you keep watching more of their content and then you go through several of the videos on their channel and you kind of just let YouTube keep playing videos because honestly you have decision fatigue and deciding between one of your 8 million different uh, hobbies for the day is impossible for you. So you sit there and you just keep watching YouTube videos only to have in a QA and a that YouTuber suddenly say something super eugenics-y and then all of a sudden you slam on the pause button you just don't know what to do because do you turn the video off do you stop watching their content did they actually say something that eugenics-y did they realize what they did and then it becomes one of these things did they always talk about this eugenics stuff was that happening all along did you just never notice what's going on when did you miss the eugenics things where did this come from why is this happening to me i just wanted a comfort channel what's going on and then after asking yourself all of those questions, you realize that the answer all along was yes. Did they cherry pick their sources? Yes. Do they have maybe some decent things to say? Maybe. Did you let them convince you to maybe be a vegan? Yeah. Does that mean you should keep watching their channel? Does it? Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and this is my ADHD lifestyle. Lifestyle, I said it right this time. Don't at me. And today I want to talk about YouTube videos and how a comfort channel you watch can suddenly make you question your whole existence and whether or not you should have been supporting that creator all along. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you like my content, please consider subscribing to this channel. And if you really like my content, please consider hitting the bell icon so you get notified every single time that I post. Now, getting into the very meaty topic I want to talk about today, which I've been thinking about since uh, probably this last March. Like many of us throughout the world, starting in March, my city went into lockdown. I started working from home full time, and I had a lot more time on my hands that I didn't have previously. So I started getting back into YouTube. I hadn't watched it for about 10 years, and maybe actually a little bit longer than that, but frankly, it was probably the only thing I really had to do at some point. I watched all of The Witcher, I watched a lot of other things on Netflix, and I was suddenly out of content to watch. Up until this point, I had been kind of dabbling in YouTube, and I had a select group of creators that I enjoyed watching when I wanted to relax, but I didn't really start getting into YouTube until the Safer at Home order went into effect. This is really when I started to branch out in YouTube. I started watching creators I didn't normally watch, and I started looking for new creators to watch. Creators can only create content so quickly, and I was consuming it at a rather rapid pace. And this is when I started to dabble in watching more stuff that I was actually interested in, and things that I wasn't interested in. Now, to give you full context for the story I told very briefly at the beginning of the video, Back in March, I started feeling more open to the idea of watching content creators that I didn't already watch and didn't appear in the videos of the content creators I already watched. YouTube suggested a video to me from a vegan YouTuber who I will only refer to as the vegan YouTuber throughout this video. Now, I want to say this is in no form a call out. Hi, uh, this is, I guess, uh, editing Jesse. Let me start from the beginning. When I wrote the script for this video, I was not aware of the very well, well done response from Faye Fahrenheit to one of the two videos that I'm talking about in this video. Um, so I am actually going to tell you, I know I call her the vegan YouTuber throughout this entire video. Um, I'm actually going to call out a natural vegan at this point and just let you guys know that that's who I'm talking about, mostly because I really wanted to point you guys to Faye's video because it's really well thought out and really well done. So you were going to find out anyway that this was a natural vegan. That seems to be the way that this video is going for me right now. I'm trying not to be a commentary channel. That was part of the reason I was doing that. But here we are. Oh, yeah. Um, so I would highly recommend you go and watch Faye Fahrenheit's video. I ran across it on a Thought Sign video in the Eyeball Zone. But Faye Fahrenheit does a really good job of breaking down a lot of the issues that came up with Unnatural Vegan's argument. And so the video that um, I'm talking about in particular is the video that earlier in this in this video here, oh man, this is gonna get confusing. When I talked about a video earlier within this video, this one that you're watching right now, I talked about a video that I turned off because uh, I felt that Unnatural Vegan just didn't really understand autistic people and probably should have talked to an autistic person before they uh before she recorded the video that she did and so i went back uh and i after seeing Faye's video 
I went back and watched a Natural Vegans video that I turned off again, and it turns out that she advocates for eugenics at the end of that video. I did not know that because I did not make it to the end of that video because I got so mad that I turned it off. It was when she was talking about neurodiversity and neurodiversity advocates, I turned it off because she implies that all of them have Asperger's, and I would consider myself a neurodiversity advocate, and I have ADHD, I do not, I'm not diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder at all, so it kind of made me very mad because I was like, what, you don't even know what you're talking about. And that was kind of the start of me realizing that a natural vegan is probably cherry picking a lot of their sources. Yeah, so um, initially I was like, you know, she made this one like offhanded comment that was very eugenics-y in a different video, and now it turns out that she's just actively advocating for eugenics on her channel. I know that now, so I just wanted to call that out in this video. I am probably going to do a part two to this video where I talk about the neurodiversity movement as I see it. That's not really what this video is about, unfortunately, so I'm not going to include that here, but I did want to make you all aware, just like content warning, if you go and watch any of our natural vegans videos, you might come into this, uh, some of these ideas that she has, and I would just really recommend you knowing about it ahead of time. Also, please go watch Faye's video. I want to say it is seriously, it's super well written. I actually was so floored by watching it, I came and recorded this right now. I'm probably going to rewatch it a couple of times before I do the part two to this video, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys were fully informed about this situation. I didn't ever in any way capacity want to make it seem like I was going easy on someone who advocated for this sort of thing, especially considering Unnatural Vegan so openly advocates for it, which I did not realize when I wrote the script or when I first recorded this video. So yeah, that was all I wanted to let you guys know about, and I will continue with the rest of this argument that I make in this essay, which has nothing really to do with neurodiversity or neurodiversity advocates. So. Yeah, I'm probably going to be talking about that later, too. Have a great day. Continue watching the video. Go watch Faye's video. I'll link it in the description below. Yeah. Bye. For me, editing Jesse. Have a, have a nice time on the rest of this video. Yeah. Instead, I kind of want to talk about the psychological effects that this experience had on me, and also talk about how it changed the way I browse YouTube. I want to say that I'm not really going to talk about the algorithm in this because I feel like a lot of creators have talked about this at length and can do it in a much better way than I can. I don't really know enough about the algorithm and I don't really think any of us do, but there are people who are more qualified to talk about it than me. And I know that there have been plenty of other projects where people talk about how that algorithm can be used to ultimately radicalize people further, so I'm not going to talk about the algorithm. And, and honestly, I'm gonna be real with you, I just really did not want to do research on it. It is way too similar to the things I do for work, and I like to have fun on this channel. I talk about things that I, I personally enjoy talking about, and talking about more IT stuff is not something I really want to talk about here. Anyway, I started watching this vegan YouTuber's videos, I was vibing with how they talked about veganism and a lot of other topics, um, I found their channel interesting and engaging, and most importantly, they were slowly but surely turning me on to the idea of going vegan. Not intentionally by any means, this vegan YouTuber's channel was not dedicated to the idea of turning non-vegans into vegans, it was just a result of watching their content. Hello, so originally in this section I talk about uh, the first video that started to put me off about um, Unnatural Vegan. I have already talked about it in my little editing Jesse break, but just to break down a little bit further because I need to change what I said in this section a little bit. So when I watched that video, I got to the part where uh, Unnatural Vegan discussed the neurodiversity movement, and when I did, I realized that she was just grossly misrepresenting it um and so i turned it off and i it, because honestly it was it was pissing me off um so i turned that video off and i didn't watch it any further than that but i thought that you know it wasn't really that big of a deal uh i felt like she was just a little bit uneducated on it and maybe should have talked to more people about that video before she made it um, even prior to that in the video, I feel like she made some comments about autism that I, I didn't agree with, which was part of the reason that I wound up turning it off as well. And so what ultimately wound up happening was I turned this video off before she openly advocates for eugenics at the end of the video. And that's what I kind of talked about a little bit earlier. So I just wanted to clarify in this section, that's what I'm kind of referring to. 
And that's why I kind of cut this section out and it's going to be a little bit weird. So I'm sorry for that, but I just want to make sure that I'm appropriately representing everything and making sure that my argument makes sense. Which was fine for me at the time. They weren't actually saying anything super heinous. They were just saying things that, in my opinion, they probably should have spoken to more autistic people about before they started to voice their opinions. It happens, we're all human, there's a reasonable explanation for this, and I was essentially just giving them the benefit of the doubt. Anyway, I continued to watch their content until I came across a video that was a Q&A video where they were just kind of answering questions from their fans. In it, the question that was asked wasn't really related to the answer that they gave, but they gave this explanation that if a fetus in the womb was discovered to have a disease that would cause them to suffer, that the pregnancy should be terminated. Now, let's unpack that, but first I want to clarify that this YouTuber was not talking about their own body. They were speaking generally, and they felt that this is generally what should be done by anyone in this situation. Which... <laughs> Now, why am I making such a big deal out of this? It's because this YouTuber was very casually advocating for and supporting eugenics. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this is eugenics. Yes, advocating that anyone who finds themselves in this situation where their fetus might have something like cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, EDS, should terminate that pregnancy because it would prevent that child from suffering is eugenics. And I want to be clear here, the reason that this isn't a hard call out for the vegan YouTuber who said this is because I genuinely believe that they didn't realize what they were advocating for when they said this very abhorrent opinion. In their mind, they just want to reduce as much suffering as possible. They've said in several other videos that their main goal being a vegan is to reduce the suffering of sentient beings. But the fact that this fairly caring thought process jumped the stream into eugenics really shocked me. When it really comes down to it, where do you draw the line? I suffered quite a bit because of my ADHD and my dyslexia, but should my mother have terminated the pregnancy if she discovered that I had ADHD and dyslexia while I was still in the womb? And that's really why you can't have a gray area when it comes to eugenics. When it really comes down to it, you need to shut it down the moment that you see it. And honestly, some of the best videos on YouTube about this topic come from Jessica Kelgren Fozard's videos about the topics of disability, eugenics, and why this really matters. I will link the videos down in my description. I can try to do pertinent videos and I'm also going to link to her channel because honestly she's a fantastic creator and if you don't already watch her you should start watching her videos. Um, also her and her wife are very cute. In case you are wondering my stance on this, in my opinion, eugenics is abhorrent as should hopefully be the predominant opinion of my viewers and also Anyone who is living with a disability should have the same rights as anyone who is living without a disability, and they should be accommodated so that they have the same opportunities. But that's not the actual topic of this video. That was just a very long contextualization of what I actually want to talk about, which is something that I'm calling YouTube treachery, wherein you watch a YouTuber's content for a very long period of time, or maybe a short period of time, only to have them express an opinion that makes you reel so hard you nearly fall out of your chair. Something about this is incredibly interesting to me, especially as someone who recently started a YouTube channel and is starting to dip my toes into the idea of doing video essays more. It's hard for me not to think about the things that YouTubers do to attract us into their channels. The way that I make thumbnails is based off of the way that other YouTubers make thumbnails in hopes of attracting someone enough that they click on the video. But when all you see is this, you don't actually know when you get into the content of the video if the YouTuber is going to start spouting alt-right fascist, or even eugenics-y opinions. The thing is, this experience with this vegan YouTuber really changed how I interact with YouTube. I started becoming more cautious. I didn't just click on any video. I started asking a friend who edits these videos. Hi, Molly. But Molly knew a lot more about YouTube than I did, so I started asking her opinion of whether or not a content creator was someone that I should watch and support. I also started turning off videos from content creators I didn't know as well with reckless abandon. If I got one inkling that there was a bad vibe, I would just dip. Why? A big part of the reason was that I didn't like the idea of supporting a creator who was using their rather large platform to ultimately harm people that I cared about. People like my trans friends and people like my friends who lived with disabilities. Something that made me see this very clearly was actually Curio's videos on the Witcher series. In their third video in the series, The Ballad of Fa The Ballad of Fanboy Geralt, <laughs> they actually talk about Joseph Anderson's Witcher critique videos in which Joseph Anderson spends a lot of time talking about how much he hates the elves and advocating for the idea that the humans and the elves cannot coexist in the series. 
which, as Kirio talks about very well in their series, actually blatantly ignores the entire point of the Witcher series. Like, all of the books, probably all of the games. Games are a little bit more questionable, but definitely the books, and probably the Netflix series. But I should say, don't harass Joseph Anderson, nor am I saying that Joseph Anderson is a racist himself. That's not really what I'm trying to get at here. It's more that the things that he was saying accidentally perpetuated those things, the same way the vegan YouTuber said something that accidentally perpetuated eugenics. Oh, which is just such a bad thing to say. Oh. What I realized by watching Kirio's video was that I had actually turned on Joseph Anderson's Witcher Critique video. I watched part of it, and as soon as I started hearing the elf racism, I clicked out. I stopped watching. Joseph Anderson, as Kirio very rightly points out in their video, has a very large platform, and he's honestly using it to just kind of perpetuate bad things about the Witcher series, a lot of the things that people misinterpret or misunderstand about it. He makes it seem like the main characters of the series wouldn't immediately hate someone who hates elves just for being elves. That's a core tenet of that series, the fact that racism is bad inherently. You can't ignore it and then pretend like you're saying the right thing all along. We know that Sapkowski was not trying to say that elf racism is good. And frankly, it really kind of pisses me off because that series is so great. When you read the books or when you watch the series, you can tell that there's a lot of heart in it. You can tell that there's a certain amount of... You can tell that there's a certain amount of understanding from Sapkowski the whole time. He knows that people out there are marginalized and that they should be helped. He's trying to say that those people are inherently the ones that we should be helping rather than helping the people who are ultimately already in power. And I think misinterpreting that is just really a bad look. And the ultimate thing that Curio points out about Joseph Anderson's content is the fact that he seems to perpetuate this and just not care at all that he's doing so. And I mean... Joseph Anderson kind of proved that with the comments that he left on Curio's videos. It's really unfortunate, and it's, again, not a good look. That part aside for a second, what I'm really getting at here is that Curio's video made me realize that I interacted with Joseph Anderson's thumbnail and video very different than how I interacted with the vegan YouTuber's videos. I interacted with Joseph Anderson's thumbnail in a way that was critical from the get-go. I thought about it really hard before I clicked into it. It was a long video and I personally was like, man, I don't really know, but I did like The Witcher, so maybe I should watch this. And ultimately, I decided to click on the video and I started watching it. And as soon as he said something that I disagreed with and was very upset about, I just clicked away from the video and I decided I wasn't gonna support him any further. He had a large platform already it's not like I was really doing any harm in choosing not to support him. And even before I clicked into that video, I thought about that experience with the vegan YouTuber. I thought about whether or not I wanted to potentially support someone who might have very different views from me and might have very, in my opinion, abhorrent or questionable views. Views that would make me very upset and that if you heard a politician say them, I wouldn't want to support them either. <sighs> And after the vegan YouTuber and Joseph Anderson and a couple other creators, I actually stopped clicking on videos without asking someone first. I asked Molly or I asked another friend if they had watched those videos before. I made sure that I was clicking on content creators that I felt comfortable supporting and I could decide if I liked them rather than deciding whether or not they thought that I should not exist as a human being. And when it came down to it, even with one of my favorite content creators now, I hesitated to watch her videos because of a few tweets I saw. After a while, I found out those tweets were made in bad faith, but I was careful about starting to watch those videos because of those tweets I saw. I wanted to know for sure that I wasn't supporting someone that was ultimately not great. Which brings me to what I'm really trying to talk about in this video. That small change from how I interacted with that vegan YouTuber's videos to how I interact with videos now 
and my absolute refusal to start watching new content creators until I have some kind of confirmation that I'm not going to find out that they're going to spew alt-right stuff or they're going to be really racist or they're just going to say something super eugenics-y randomly or even they're going to do some garden variety run-of-the-mill blatantly misinterpreting a series and ultimately accidentally further perpetuating already racist ideas. On that note, I have to say my tolerance for the apolitical these days has gotten really low. I really can't deal with people pretending like politics don't exist or pretending like it doesn't matter or that it won't ultimately harm people, you know, that kind of thing because of the state of the world. And that might be why I've become hypersensitive about what I'm going to watch before I even watch it and whether or not I want to support a creator before I've even started supporting them. But as I was writing this essay and I was really thinking about it, I think what I'm doing is good, actually. Now, again, I'm never advocating for harassment. I was not advocating for harassment against this vegan YouTuber, that's why they're not named. I'm not advocating for harassment against Joseph Anderson, despite the fact that I named him. And I don't think you should harass content creators that you don't like. I never went out of my way to harass Joseph Anderson, I just stopped watching his content. And not to like get up on a soapbox, but you know, as I was writing this essay it occurred to me that a lot of YouTubers simply gain monetary support by you clicking into their video and watching their video and watching the ads that pop up on the video. Or you know, they use you as a subscriber or a viewer even to look at a, a sponsorship and say, listen, I got 1 million views on this. That's 1 million people you could be reaching with this sponsorship. Everything that goes into a YouTuber's channel could potentially be used to support them monetarily. And while I don't think that creators like Joseph Anderson and, you know, this vegan YouTuber should be completely deplatformed and therefore not allowed to make money and not allowed to support their families, I personally think it's completely fine for someone to say, you know what? I just can't tolerate this and just walk away. And, you know, people talk about cancel culture all the time, and I don't think this is the same thing. It's okay to hold someone accountable, especially on a personal level if you're not harassing them. It's okay to walk away from a creator that you just don't like anymore because they keep saying things that upset you. Also, even more wild, I've actually had friends start coming to me when they want to ask about creators and whether or not they're someone that they feel should be supported. They ask me questions like, is this someone who has similar views to me? Do they say bad things about people that are harmful and harmful to marginalized groups? And it's taken me a little bit of time to get used to, but at this point we're all kind of sick of just passively supporting anyone who comes around. It's not something we want to do anymore. I'll be honest, I watch a lot of YouTubers who don't talk about politics on their channel, whether they sew or make soap or whatever, but ultimately if I found out that one of them felt, say, that trans children shouldn't be allowed to use the bathroom at school that they identify with, I'd stop supporting them altogether. There's a reason people like Jeffree Star continue to have a platform on YouTube and continue to have one despite all of the horrid things that they've done. It's because not enough people put their foot down and said, I want to stop watching this content creator. Not enough of them felt that he had crossed the line. So I guess the point of this video here is ultimately it's okay for people to put their foot down and decide that a creator has crossed the line and that they're not going to support them anymore. In fact, I think it's really good. Again, not supporting harassment. Do not harass anyone. But actively saying, you know what? You say things I don't agree with and they upset me and it's not even a matter of upset. I think you might ultimately be harming people and harming the systems that we're trying to create to help them. It's okay for you to look at someone and say, man, you're terrible to marginalized people and I can't deal with that. Yeah. But yeah, I guess that is the whole point of this video. The other point of this video is for me to be very introspective about how I interact with YouTube. Like I said, I'm a very new user to YouTube in a lot of ways. While it's existed for most of my life and I did watch content creators that were Ooh, horribly problematic when I was younger, I really didn't watch any YouTube regularly until uh, like about a year ago now. And so I kind of missed that whole inner area that, that everything. <laughs> the existence of the partner program, the partner program not being as good as it used to be, you know, all of that. I missed all of that. And 
I think it's interesting to me that I wound up doing this so quickly, and I kind of wonder why this doesn't happen more on this platform. Yeah, it was, it was interesting to be introspective about how I interact with the content that I like to watch when I'm relaxing. It was interesting. But also, this video was really nice for me to be really introspective about how I interact with YouTube, especially since I'm becoming a YouTuber slowly but surely, and while I do this as a hobby, it's still something that kind of matters to me. Yeah. That's what this was about. Anyway, you've made it to the end of this video, and so today I'm introducing something a little bit new, I think. Anyway, you've made it to the end of this video, and I'm introducing something new. I am giving you a word of the day. That word of the day is introspective. The word of the day means the examination and observation of one's own mental and emotional processes. If you made it to the end of this video and you heard the word of the day, please take that word of the day and put it down in the comments below. It will be a little secret between the two of us. I'll know what you guys are doing, but no one else will, and it'll drive engagement because that's something you're supposed to want on this godforsaken platform, I guess. 30 followers. I'm already getting into the shitting on YouTube jokes. I am going to put links to, hopefully, um, information about the situation in Poland down below. I am actually rather Polish myself. It's something that's always been really important to me. I've always wanted to travel to Poland, and I am also an LGBT person. So, you know, hearing that they're trying to take away all of the rights of my LGBT siblings in Poland concerns me a lot. I would like that to stop. So if you guys can, in any way, shape, or form, um, support that, you know, cause, that would be really helpful and really cool. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. And if you really like my content, please consider hitting the bell icon so you get notified every single time that I post. I really want to wish you all a very lovely day. I hope that you find creators on YouTube that you love. If you have questions, concerns, or you want to add to the conversation, please comment down below. I would absolutely love that. And, you know, see you next time. Oh, bam! I hope I can do this in one shot. That's my goal. <sighs> <Yes. laughs> We're just gonna go full shoulder out, maybe. Now, probably <laughs> 10 years ago. Um, not a lot. <sighs> now, <laughs> I don't know why this is becoming my thing. For the story I told very briefly at the beginning of the inter interview video. Oh, I air quoted the wrong thing. <laughs> Trying to get an internal screaming shot. Mm. I didn't expect to get as choked up as I am. Oh, I'm really nervous about this one. Mm. I got so close. I almost said it right. In the third video, the ballad. Ah, so I just can't say the word ballad. I got so close. I want to have to cut it together. I want to say it all right. I'm mad because it was not recording, and I was saying good things about the thing. E -e -e -e. So I stopped. Thesis statement of the entire video.